Okay, so uh, particularly challenging uh, natural log question number 30 from um, section 5.5, 5, page 377. I just chose this one because it looks like a pain in the butt. So um, getting to see here that like in terms of when we're analyzing this whole function, see it from the broad perspective, we notice that we have a quadratic and it's being multiplied by a natural log function. So our immediate thought then is, hey, you know what? If we're multiplying two different functions together, we're probably talking about the product rule here. Um, to give you a sense of what this graph looks like, yeah, it kind of looks, well, it looks like something like this. You can see that as x is getting infinitely big, that, that t squared factor really pulls a lot of weight. And you can tell that it's kind of resembling more of a t squared, a t squared, uh, uh, like a quadratic uh, kind of ending there. But you know, it's got this like little bit of an asymptote because zero couldn't be in, in, in the function because of the natural log. So yeah, this function in, in makes a little bit of sense when we kind of look at its graph. So let's go forward and differentiate this thing. So we have a u and we have a v. So the first step we'll take a look at here is um, reminding ourselves, maybe we'll start off by reminding ourselves what the product rule says. The product rule is u prime times v plus v prime times u. So if u is going to be our quadratic, our t squared. Excuse me, it's early u is equal to our t squared, then our u prime is equal to t to t. And then if our natural log function or the natural log factor is our v, then how are we gonna go about finding our v prime? Okay, well now on closer inspection, not only do we realize we have a natural log function, but inside that natural log, fun log function is composed uh, an e to the e to the something function, e to the x function, and then even more so, we see that the e to the something is itself a composite function because that's e to the two t. So we're going to be doing some monster chain rule work here. Let's, let's go ahead and start off by thinking first about our whole function that we're looking at for v, the natural log. Well, the derivative of the natural log is going to be 1 over x, or 1 over whatever it was in that domain space, which was e to the 2t plus 1. OK, great. Now we need to take the derivative of this, of this, of the inside purple part. So I'll put that purple. So we're taking the derivative of this inside part. Well, the derivative of e to the 2t is just itself. Derivative of one is zero. So the derivative of this inside part here is just e to the 2t. But then we have that chain rule going on up here in the exponent. So then we take the derivative of this inner function and the derivative of 2t is just two. So put this all together and what do we have? Multiplication, we have 2e to the 2t all over e to the t plus 1. All right, I think we've got all our components here. We have our u, we have our u prime, we have our v, we have our v prime. So let's put this all together. g prime of t, the derivative of g is equal to u prime, which we said was 2t, times v, which we said was the natural log of e to the 2t plus 1, plus, there's our u prime, there's our v, plus our v prime, which is 2e to the 2t over e to the t plus 1 times our u, which is t squared times our u right there. 
All right, scroll down and clean this up just a little bit. So what we're going to have here left then is 2t natural log of e to the 2t plus 1 plus, we'll multiply across the numerators, times 2t squared e to the 2t all over e to the, oop, dropped the 2 there. My bad e to the 2t plus 1. I think that that's it. All right. Good luck.